Welcome to The Explainer. So today we're diving into a story that looks pretty simple at first glance, but trust me, there's this really fascinating strategy hiding just underneath. We're talking about how the world's biggest company is planning to win the whole AI race. Not by being the fastest out of the gate, but by being the smartest player on the field. All right, so let's get right into it. Because you know, while every other tech giant was practically screaming about AI from the rooftops, the biggest company in the world was, well, strangely quiet. It made everyone, and I mean everyone, wonder, seriously, where is Apple in all of this? Okay, to really get what Apple's doing, we've got to rewind a bit. Back to that big AI explosion that they seemingly missed. You can think of it like this huge party that every single tech giant was at, except for one very conspicuous notion. Yeah, starting back in late 2022, it was just an absolute frenzy, right? You had OpenAI, Google, Microsoft, Meta. I mean, every big player you can think of launched their own thing in the AI space. But from Apple? Crickets. Just silence. A really, really loud silence that went on for more than a year. But here's the thing. It wasn't inaction. It was actually a massive strategic pivot happening behind closed doors. Apple quietly hit the brakes on its huge $10 billion car project, a project they'd been working on for a decade. And they funneled all of that money, all of those engineers, towards a completely new fight, AI. And you know that public silence? It was the perfect cover for what was really going on. While we were all watching their rivals make flashy announcements, Apple was on a shopping spree. They were quietly buying up the competition, snapping up 32 different AI startups. That's more than anyone else. So you see, they weren't missing the race at all. They were just training for it in secret. And then it happened. June 2024, at their big Worldwide Developers Conference, Apple finally showed its cards. The entire tech world was holding its breath, you know, expecting some kind of revolution. But what they got? Well, it was something else entirely. And the reaction from critics? It wasn't just disappointment. It was brutal. I mean, this quote really says it all. The general feeling was that Apple didn't just show up late to the party. They showed up with a product that was half-baked and just not ready. So this big reveal, they called it Apple Intelligence, it just felt like a list of things gone wrong. I mean, think about it. Features were announced but weren't actually launched. The stuff that was released was apparently pretty buggy. Basic features were getting delayed for months. The brand new Siri pushed all the way to 2027. And get this, it only worked on the very latest, most expensive iPhones. It just looked like they were miles behind Samsung and Google. So on the surface, it really did look like a failure. Super easy to just say, yep, Apple's late. But here's where it gets interesting. This is the crucial question. What if Apple isn't even fighting the same war as everybody else? What if they're playing a completely different game? And to understand that game, you just have to follow the money. It's actually pretty simple with Apple. A whopping 80% of their cash comes from selling you physical stuff, you know, iPhones, Macs, Apple Watches, AirPods. For them, hardware is absolutely king. Now let's flip that on its head and look at their rivals. For companies like Google and Microsoft, the story is completely different. Their businesses are all about cloud computing and selling services, you know, subscriptions to other companies. Hardware, yeah, it's there, but it's a much, much smaller slice of the pie. And that right there, that difference in how they make money, it reveals two totally different goals. Google and Microsoft, they're fighting a war for the cloud, for enterprise customers. They're building AI to sell to businesses. But Apple, they're in a war for your pocket. They're using AI for one and only one reason, to make you want to buy more of their gorgeous and yes, expensive hardware. Okay, so once you get that fundamental difference, everything changes. You start to see their big announcement not as a flop, but as the very first move in this super meticulous four-part plan to basically own the next chapter of tech. So this plan, it has four key parts, and each one is designed to create a totally different kind of AI experience from what we've seen before. So let's jump in with step one. All right, step one, the invisible model. See, instead of making you learn a bunch of confusing technical names like GPT-40 or Gemini 1.5 Pro, Apple just calls their thing Apple Intelligence. That's it. They hide all the complicated stuff. 
The system just automatically picks the best tool for whatever you're doing, whether that's summarizing an email or creating a quick image. The whole point is to focus on what you want to do, not the nerdy tool you're using to do it. Next up, step two, powerful AI agents. Now this is the big one. This is the future they're really aiming for. It's an AI that can actually do things for you across multiple apps on your phone. So just imagine saying something like, hey Siri, book me the cheapest cabs of the airport and then text my wife that I'm on my way. To do that, the AI has to open different ride-sharing apps, compare prices, book one, then jump over to your messaging app to send a text. That complex cross-app action, that's what they call an AI agent. And it is basically the holy grail of personal AI. Okay, step three, the distribution flywheel. And this, my friends, brings us to Apple's most powerful and, let's be honest, totally unfair advantage. This is their secret weapon. Two billion. Just let that number sink in. That's how many active Apple devices there are out in the world right now. So when they have a new AI feature ready to go, doesn't matter if they built it themselves or partnered up, they can push it out to that massive built-in network practically overnight. Nobody else on the planet can even come close to that kind of scale. And finally, step four, building trust. This one tackles the biggest fear everyone has about AI head on, privacy. You'll notice they use these very reassuring terms like private cloud compute, and they make a big deal about always asking for your permission before your data goes anywhere near an outside model like chat GPT. It's a very deliberate, very smart strategy to make Apple feel like the safe, trustworthy choice in what can feel like a pretty scary new world of AI. So the big question is, how can Apple actually pull all this off when its competitors can't? Well, the answer is baked right into the company's DNA. It all comes down to one thing, integration. Apple controls the whole stack. The hardware, like the iPhone itself, the operating system, iOS, and the real key, the custom silicon chips that are the brains of the operation. Now, their rivals, like Google and Microsoft, they have to rely on a whole network of different partners for all those pieces. But Apple's total control, it gives them this incredible efficiency that lets them run really powerful AI right there on your device, not just in the cloud. And that's something their competitors can only dream about right now. And all of this, it brings us to the real end game, the ultimate goal behind Apple's seemingly slow and underwhelming AI strategy. Because here's the secret. The goal was never to build the world's best AI model in a lab. The goal is to use AI as the superglue for their entire ecosystem. To make the iPhone, the Mac, the AirPods all work together so seamlessly, so intelligently, that the idea of leaving for Android or Windows just becomes unthinkable. It's not about making a smarter AI. It's about using AI to make your life inside their ecosystem unbeatable. So you see, by focusing on the entire ecosystem instead of just the AI model, Apple is playing the long game here, one that could totally redefine the tech landscape. They aren't trying to build a better brain in a lab. They're trying to build a better, more seamless life for you, as long as you stay inside their walls. Which leaves us with one final, pretty provocative question to think about. 